Good morning and welcome to MCC TV International Show. My name is John David. I'm the Business Department Coordinator at MCC and also I'm the host for this show. A new school year, a new season, a new show. And thank you, Chad Bishop, for the new set for this year. Uh, as you see, you know, Chad is always every year like to change, or even sometimes every semester, like to change the set so that we always bring the best to you, our audience that are watching our show. Uh, Chad and I had a discussion. Where we talked about, like, okay, well, as a new season now, uh, who would like to host for this first show in this new season? And we thought, like, you know, we have to host someone that we feel and we think that a special person to our MCC, to our community. And as we start talking about that, you know, we couldn't find anyone more special than our new president, Dr. Naomi De Winter. Thanks a lot for uh, accepting to be on our show today, and welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm honored to be the very first guest for the season. Thank you, and well, honored to have you with us today, too. Well, I would like to give the audience, our audience who are watching us, some idea about your background. So if we start with some sort of an idea about your background, and then we'll take it from there. Sure, yeah. I've had uh, the opportunity to have a very interesting background uh, thanks to my family who currently live in Japan. My mother and father live in Japan right now, but uh, my international travel started in Germany. When I was six years old and my siblings were a little bit older than I, my father decided to move the family from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to Hanau, Germany. And Hanau is the birthplace of the Grimm brothers of the mm -hmm. fairy tales. And so uh, we lived there for 19 years. And my dad is an educator. And so he decided to do an experiment with his youngest daughter, which was me. <laughs> and so uh, the experiment was whether I could learn German in German school, because I was six years old, so it was time for me to enter first grade, at the same level as a native German. And so I without knowing any German in advance, started the first grade. And it took a whole family effort to get through the first couple of years of elementary school homework and understanding everything that was going on. And uh, after, it took several years, I think, for me to become fluent and comfortable in the language, mostly because we didn't speak it at home at all. So, but I went through um, elementary school in German school, and then I had a chance to go to a private school, which is a college prep um, type school, and I finished 13 years of schooling in Germany. They have an extra year, uh, and so I graduated when I was 19 years old, and I hold an Abitur, which is um, kind of a diploma at the end of a high school education that's very common in Europe. At the time, I thought I would apply to some universities in Germany, which I did. Um, Heidelberg was one of them, Frankfurt was another one. But I was also a tennis player, and I had played tennis since I was, oh, a young, a young girl. And I wanted to play tennis in college. And in Germany, um, all of their sports and academics are separate. So if you want to do a sport, you join a club. And in, in high school, you just do schoolwork. And I wanted that combination of a student athlete experience. And so when I was 19, I decided to come to the States and I attended Eastern Michigan University on a tennis scholarship. And it was a wonderful experience. I'd never been to Ypsilanti, Michigan before. <laughs> and uh, I studied Japanese there because of my mother's uh, heritage. She's Japanese and um, international trade. I was interested in business at the time. I stayed in Ypsilanti and completed my bachelor's degree and master's degree there. And then I started working at Oakland Community College, which is a large, one of the largest community colleges in Michigan. And uh, most recently, I moved to a community college in northern Michigan called North Central Michigan. And I was there for the last 17 years. Um, I mentioned my parents had moved to Japan probably now, 20 years ago or so, they live in a city called Iwakuni, 
and um, that is about 45 minutes from Hiroshima. And so I had an opportunity to, opportunity to visit them about three times um, since they've been there. And I try to keep up the Japanese culture as much as I can. I speak Japanese conversationally and, of course, German now. Um, and I have three daughters at home, so I speak to them in Japanese. And, and do they, I, I mean, this, this is another thing, you know, I, I mean, just le sitting here and listening to your story is very inspirational. I mean, so, so you speak several languages, yes. obviously, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing now. So are you trying to teach the kids, your kids also, some of those languages so that uh, that they will be multilingual, for example, and why you think it's important to do that? Oh, sure, yes. So I decided to stick with Japanese when I had my girls, and I have three children, I think I mentioned this, and mm. it was important to me to not translate a language, but rather communicate in that language. So that's why um, I don't say something in English and then repeat it in Japanese or say something in English and repeat it in German. I thought it's very important to have direct communication in the language. And so I decided on Japanese because I'm half Japanese and they're a quarter Japanese. So I thought that would be the best for them. They uh, understand everything that I say and they've just started responding in Japanese to me this summer, which was the most delightful thing to hear. <laughs> Usually it was me speaking Japanese yeah. and they responding in English. Yeah. And now I can hear them speaking Japanese to each other. And the littlest girl, she's five, she doesn't know whether it's English or Japanese, I think. So it just comes out the, the <clears throat> most naturally. I want them to have a sense of their own background. And this is one way of me to, to give that to them. And while they may not be fluent speakers when they're, when they're children, um, because my vocabulary is also limited, I want them to appreciate the sounds of the language so that when they're adults and they choose to pick it up, which I hope they do and study it more seriously, it will be in, in, their, in their brains and, and in their bodies. I think uh, it is so fun to learn a different language and to be able to speak in that language to, to other people. Uh, and to, to know how common we are by sharing different different languages. And so that's my main reason for, for teaching them. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I grew up also in, in, in a house that, you know, my dad was a linguistic yeah. professor. So he spoke five languages fluently and he kept telling us that every time you learn a new language, you become a new person. Yeah. And, and, and I'm experiencing the same thing now with my kids too. I mean, we, we are trying to get them to speak both languages, yeah. you know, Arabic and English. And it's very fun really to see them sometimes either communicating in this language or answering or responding in a different yes. language. That's always very fun. Yes. Uh, so I, I know you did some travel in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a very extensive international experience, obviously. Uh, how about your kids? your family, uh, did, you, did they travel anywhere so far? Are you trying maybe to take them around, to show them other culture and so on? Yes, well right now, we just recently moved to Muscatine in August mm -hmm. and um, they're still very young, so I have not attempted a long trip such as the one to Japan, which they've been pressuring me about now for the last couple years. Um, my littlest daughter is five, and so I think she's just on the edge of being able to make that very long trip. Uh, I hope to take them to Japan within the next year or two, and I think for them that will be so wonderful to be able to use the language that they've been learning just at home with, with strangers in Japan. So that's definitely on my bucket list and they'll be giving me enough pressure to, to make that happen. And, and, and just talking about that also, I'm not quite sure, uh, Naomi, if, if you know that. I mean, our Muscatine sister city, we do have a sister city relationship and it was one of the first relationships that we start between Muscatine and Ichikawa Misato, which is also a city in Japan. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we will we'll, we'll get you to get also involved, especially with this that relationship. We have also a 
sister school relationship uh, between West Middle School here in Muscatine and a school in uh, Chicago, Misato. Okay. And uh, last month we just had uh, over 10 kids from that school in Japan visiting visited Muscatine. Oh, wow. And tradition, we do that like every other year. Yes. Some of our students goes there, and some of their students the next year comes here. So that's that's another thing I mean to think about because you know we, we it's it's a very strong relationship. Yes. It's well built long time ago, yeah. and it continue to go. So yeah. so hopefully this will be uh, will provide you with more information about that. Oh, yeah. So you mentioned that your parents right now lives in Japan for yeah. the past 20 years. Well, why is that? So my dad teaches uh, art. He's an elementary art school teacher at uh, Department of Defense schools. And so that's the reason we moved to Germany. They, wherever we have troops stationed across the world, we typically have a whole system that supports the dependence of those soldiers. And so there are schools uh, where we were in Germany, and there's a school on the Marine base where they are in Iwakuni right now. Um, I should mention that while my dad is not Japanese, he's a six-foot uh, Polish guy, yeah. he speaks Japanese fluently. fluently. Wow. He is a master of the tea ceremony, which oh uh, if he ever comes here, I would love to uh, have an opportunity to show the residents of Muscatine that. Wow. And he, he's, he's more Japanese probably than a Japanese person. <laughs> and so I think that's another reason why the Japanese culture and language um, was able to flourish within our family. So we were able to speak English and Japanese at home, you know, quite regularly. Mm -hmm. And I know in other multicultural families, um, that's not always the case, where, where one language uh, cannot be promoted. Yeah. And so I think that's really, really important that my dad has embraced that and has encouraged us to study it and, and really live it. So yeah, that's been an interesting uh, journey for him. He is um, retirement age and has been for many years, but he loves to teach and he, he considers himself already retired because this is now his hobby. It's a, oh. it's a love to teach the elementary school kids. Wow. So. That's, that's a great story yeah. that you are sharing with us and with our audience. Um, I would like to uh, move a little bit and start talking about moving to Muscatine, mm -hmm. accepting the job as a president uh, for Muscatine Community College. Um, what do you think of Muscatine? First of all, let's talk about the community, yeah. and then we'll go back to the college. Yes. I mean, yes. so what do you think about that? You know, we've been very, very impressed with the people of Muscatine. We lived before in a small city uh, called Petoskey. It was a resort town, mm -hmm. and we had lots and lots of tourists in the summer and winter for different uh, for different activities, and it was. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful place situated right on Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan. And we were probably more attached to it than we realized. Uh, when we first came to Muscatine, we kept comparing Muscatine to Petoskey. You know, it's not on Lake Michigan, and it doesn't have this, and it doesn't have that. And then we got to know some of the people, and it was, it felt very, very positive. So while I miss my colleagues and my friends in Petoskey, I, I just realized the other day that I do not regret at all having moved to Muscatine. So what drew us here was uh, there's a greater diversity than there was in, in Petoskey. And I think it's wonderful to have the mix of, of different cultures right here. Um, also, the city is, is quite large, and I know it has prospects of growing even larger and attracting more, more people to the area. There is a diverse economy. And I think that in relation to the community college is really important so that we can train people who are immediately ready to work at places like Monsanto and Han and All Steel and Kent, um, but also prepare students to transfer to University of Iowa and Iowa State and all of those wonderful institutions. So that connection I think is very strong and that's another thing that attracted me to Muscatine. Um, we found a house to live in uh, and the community has been very welcoming. We had help with mowing the lawn, with food, with cookies, with um, 
just people stopping by to make sure we didn't need anything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've, uh, you've heard before the Midwest people are very, very friendly, and that is certainly the case for Muscatine. So my family and I have felt very, uh, very welcomed here, and we're happy to be here. Glad to hear that. Yeah. It is definitely and indeed a welcoming community. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Okay, in terms of MCC, mm -hmm. the college now, as a president for uh, Muscatine Community College, I know that you have a vision mm -hmm. uh, where you want to take the college, uh, how you want to move the college forward, and so on. So can we start like talking a little bit about that vision? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to see MCC uh, doing, for example? Where do you like to see MCC uh, in five years, in 10 years, and, and things like that? Mm -hmm. So I envision MCC as the first choice college for students who are in Muscatine, in greater Muscatine area. And I know that we serve a lot of students already, but also there is not a high enough percentage of high school graduates who choose to go to college. And so with uh, high school faculty and people like Jerry Reby, the superintendent of Muscatine Schools, I'm trying to work on increasing the college going rate for all of the students in all of our schools that we serve. I think it is very important to increase the knowledge and the workforce uh, of Muscatine area. And times have changed so that simply finishing with a high school diploma, which may have been okay many years ago, is not enough to be competitive now. And so I would like really every high school student to consider some training, whether it's short term or long term, to have more tools in their toolbox, to have a career that they will be satisfied with, to have a career that will give them wages that are sustainable if they choose to start a family, and that will increase the economic um, engine that, that is Muscatine. So that's one thing about increasing the college going rates, and I think we have to play a strong role in providing programs that are needed by our local industry, in really focusing on student success. Um, I previously had worked at an Achieving the Dream College, and our big focus was increasing student success because a community college, a community college has the beauty of accepting all students who have an interest in pursuing their education. And that beauty is also the challenge because we have students at so many different levels. And unfortunately, we lose a lot of those students before they finish their certificate or degree, before they finish what they intended to do. And I want to work with the students here and the faculty and the support staff to make sure that we work with the students individually from beginning to end so that we can impact that percentage of, of success. I think globalization is something that I'm naturally interested in and I'm happy to hear that the district, Eastern Iowa Community College District, is also working on. We have several initiatives going on. Um, at the end of the month, we'll be hosting three administrators from one of our partner universities in China. And our goal is to increase the number of students who come to MCC and the other EICC colleges, and also our own students who have the opportunity for study abroad. And I know that's not something new for MCC and for EICC, but it's something that I think can be expanded to give more students that wonderful, life-changing opportunity of being in another country. When I first came here and talked to students and faculty, they had specific examples of international students who made a difference in their classrooms. And I think in a rural area such as Muscatine, it's very important to look beyond this area and to know how much more is going on. So we'll work on globalization efforts too. I think workforce development is very important, and, and I talked about this before, but we want to make sure we know what jobs are available now and what jobs will be available in five years from now so that our graduates, when they complete, have a job ready for them. And so we're working with the chamber 
and other economic development groups, the business um, leaders directly to make sure that we're in line, that, that we're not behind, but we're ahead of the curve. And we do that on our credit side and also on our continuing education on our non-credit side. So I see lots of opportunities for MCC. They're all very, very exciting. Uh, it will take a group effort. We, it's not me doing this work. It's, it's you and the rest of the faculty and the students and the administrators who will do all of this work together. So I'm really looking forward to the next few years. And, and that's great to hear that, especially, you know, for me, it's great to hear that because, uh, you know, I have been leading a study abroad program for three years already, and, and I can see the students who even went on the first visit three years ago, they still, every time we talk to each other or we see each other and so on, they still uh, talk in details about their experience and how that 10 days experience changed their life completely. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that this is part of what you like to do yes. and, and, and what you like to see MCC doing. Um, w one thing I notice about you is that you don't sit much in your office. Mm -hmm. I see you around almost anywhere I go. Student center, I see you there. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the quad area, I see you there. Sometimes you sit there and have your lunch. Yeah. There, library, you are all over. Mm -hmm. and, and this is really a, a very neat uh, and a great thing to see our president is all over mm -hmm. around. Well, wh wh why is that? I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to see you around, uh, really, and, and I think students gonna look at that as, as a great opportunity for them to communicate with you, and, and I see that you are not building any kind of walls between you and, and the rest of the community at Muscatine Community College. Yes. Uh, but, but, but why is that? I mean, that's a new approach that yes. we're seeing. Yes. Well, I think it's important to make myself available. Mm -hmm. I, my job is not to um, work through my own ideas, but my job is to support the ideas of others. And so the best way for me to do that is to learn directly from people that I come across and be available to people so that I hear their opinions, both positive and negative. You know, what can we do to improve mm -hmm. MCC? So I, I uh, make it a point to make myself accessible. Of course, I'm accessible in my office, but I think to go through the door of the office and, and ask for me is something different than talking to me when I'm, when I'm eating pizza on a, on a pizza ranch day yeah, in the student yeah. center. So that is something that, especially as a new president, I, I need to spend a lot of time learning the institution, and I do that through the people and the students. What's important to MCC? What's been the history? What are the dreams of those who've worked here? And I try to put that together uh, as we do the planning. Um, later on today, I'll be joining uh, a, a class that Kay Roof Steffen is teaching, and it's uh, all of the students, including me, will be giving a two-minute presentation. And so she invited me into the class, and I'm just observing so that in class I have an idea of, of the dynamics between the instructor and the students. And I think that's another way for me to, to learn. And then when she said all of the students will be giving two-minute speeches, um, and she invited me to do that, I couldn't say no. <laughs> so, so I have to give a speech with three things that uh, demonstrate who I am. And uh, I'm limited to two minutes. She said she's very strict with the time it, it's very It's very so, tough, so, yeah. So I'm a little bit worried, but uh, yeah. I hope to get through yeah. that this well, afternoon. Well, glad, I'm really glad that uh, we are, and you are sharing your story with, with everybody in Muscatine. Uh, it's a great story, and uh, I, I will guarantee one thing, that everyone that works at MCC is proud to be part of MCC. And, um, and, and that's what I think makes, what makes MCC a great place to work for. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sure, you know, as we go towards almost the end of this interview here and this TV show, and, and uh, I would like to give you some, what I call free time, usually, 
uh, to say whatever you want to say. I mean, you can share things about your family, you can share things about your experience so far here in Muscatine, wherever you would like to share with mm -hmm. us. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I sh my daughters would be very, very disappointed if I did not tell you a little bit more about them. Yeah. In fact, when I was telling them I, I had a chance to speak to, this, to the class and I had to bring three things, they suggested that it be them that I bring. <laughs> and I said, no, no, that's, I don't think they, what they were looking for. So my oldest daughter is Sachi. She's 11 years old. And um, her name means happiness in Japanese. Uh, my middle daughter, Mia, is eight years old, and her name means beautiful vessel. And the me that is in Naomi is the same me that is in Mia, so we share okay. that Japanese character. And then Kimi is my youngest. She's five years old. Again, you'll see the me in her name, so the same character. And her name means beautiful and straight. And so... Um, they are a delightful bunch of girls, and uh, they invigorate and energize me uh, every day. Uh, when I had Kimi uh, in uh, 2010, I began a doctorate program because I thought, this is the best time to do that. It will not get any less busy. <laughs> and so I started a doctorate program at Ferris State University in Michigan in community college leadership. And it was at that time that I dedicated my professional career to work in community colleges. I think it is such an important asset to any community. And I want to bring what I've learned through that program, through my experiences at North Central and Oakland Community College, to MCC to improve it uh, upon what it is already. Well, Dr. De Winter, I mean, it's a pleasure to have you on our show. Uh, as we said in the beginning of the show, uh, we were looking for a special person uh, for our first uh, show for the season. And you are so special to MCC, the community, and to everybody that get in touch with you and get to know you more and more and learn about what you do uh, for your family and for the community and for, for the college too. So many thanks for uh, sharing your story with us and with our audience. Yes. And hopefully at some point in the future also, we'll host you again to talk about more specific projects that you are trying to do or you are trying to achieve here at MCC. So millions of thanks for being with us this morning. As I always say, if you have any question and or comments, you can uh, communicate with me. You can call me at 563-288-6064, or you can email me at jdebit at eicc.edu. Till next time, Muscatine, bye-bye. <laughs>